Hi everyone, as I promised, we're in Polotsk now um, and would like to introduce to you uh, the members of our Polotsk Jewish community, um, Larissa, who is our heritage coordinator in uh, Polotsk, and Rina, uh, she's the director of the Finchley Foundation, uh, a member of the Jewish community. Now I would like to ask Larissa to give us a few uh, brief points on where does the Polotsk start, what, what's behind us, uh, why is Polotsk called Polotsk? And as I know, the Polotsk is, is a city, most ancient city in Belarus, and that's where actually Belarus has started. Larissa, tell us a bit more about it. That's right. That's right. The most ancient city of Belarus. And we are now in the center of Polotsk of the 11th century here. Right. But before the first settlers came here, from the Baltic Sea. You see the Western Dvina, it goes to the West Baltic Sea. And from there, Baltic tribes came to this place and they saw this small river over there. They gave the name to the river, the Polota. They sailed down this river 80, 800 meters and organized their settlement on the river. And this river gave the name to the ah, city. So basically you're saying that the Polosk is called after the river Polota. That's Amazing. right. Amazing. And only in the 11th century, the center of Polosk was here in this very place. Right. And a very powerful duke, duke, his name was Seslav, the sorcerer was his nick uh -huh. nickname. He started to build the cathedral. Look here. We see two tower cathedral, but in the 11th century, it looked like this one. It had domes, seven domes. Uh, it was destroyed in the 18th century, and in the 18th century, it was restored again. But we have now two towers. This cathedral is called St. Sophia's Cathedral. This powerful duke pu put it here because he wanted to show the whole Eastern Europe that Polotsk is on the same level as Kiev Principality, Novgorod Principality. This is our visiting card, and today it is the museum and uh, concert hall. When did the Jews come to Polotsk? What was the first mentioning of the Jews in Polotsk? Uh, well, uh, in the 14th century, Polotsk was in the country which, that was called the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Right. And in the 14th century, the Duke Bitovt invited Jews to the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. But the first Jew in Polotsk was noticed in the 16th century. 16th century. It was okay. the person who collected tags from other people. And then, as I understand, the Jewish community de developed and That's it became right. larger. That's and right. as far as I know, that around 100 years ago, uh, the population of Polsk was around 20,000, which 10,000 of which was Jewish, so 50%. That's right. It was the uh, census in 1891, and they uh, put it down that 50% of Jews were here. Great. Amazing. So, guys, we're standing here in this center um, where, where the Belarus began. So that's where it's all started. We decided to take a bit of a rest here uh, with this wonderful company. We're in the center of Polotsk under this wonderful umbrella um, that um, is, a, is a, like a little monument, uh, symbolizes a friendship. So everybody can sit under uh, one umbrella. And we're here today with, with Rina and Larissa. Um, the members of the uh, Jewish community of Polotsk and Larissa will continue telling us about the wonderful sites of Polotsk and the history and the heritage of Polotsk. Um, let's go! And now I want to invite you to the center of Europe. Uh, just follow me, please. <laughs> center of Europe. Center of Europe is here in Polotsk since 2008. And here, in this avenue, you will see the monument devoted to this, uh, to this event. So you're saying that the Polotsk is like a, a central point in Europe? Yes, between the yes, Eastern, geographical e point. And, Western Europe. and now okay. I want to show it to you. You see the monument, uh, which was placed here in 2008. And here you see the map of Europe, and here these are the coordinates of Polosk, just in the center. By the way, I want to open one mystery for you. You know, when our uh, 
uh, investigators started to find the center of Europe, they found out that it is 30 kilometers away from Polos. Ah, I knew. On I knew that. the lake, which is called the lake shore, uh, there is a lot of fish there. But tourists don't go to that place and they put the monument in this place. Many tourists who come here visit the center of Polotsk. And if you want to get the certificate that you have been here... In the center of Europe. Yes, yeah. you can buy this certificate here in the hotel. Those who were born here, they have the certificate that they were born in the center of Europe. Those who went to the army, they also can get the certificate that they served here in the army. Larissa, could you tell me what, what's the camera there on the, on the building? Well, this is a camera that uh, reflects the beginning of the 20th century. All oh, right. This street used to be the busiest street in Polsk. And here there were a lot of photo uh, atelier, <laughs> photo yeah. photo uh, shops, studio, studios, photo shops. Mm -hmm. And they uh, used such a camera at the beginning of the 20th century. Here there also were drug stores and a lot of Jewish well-to-do families used to live in this very street. So you're saying this is, was like a Jewish quarter. What was the Jewish uh, population yes, 100 uh, years ago? Um, the end of the 19th century, about 20,000 people on the whole in Polsk and 50% mm -hmm. uh, were Jewish people. All right. It belonged to a very rich Jewish person. The name of the hotel is Grand Hotel. Right. Uh, opposite you see a very good architecture, very interesting yes, architecture. Yes, very interesting building, yes. With lions over it the looks windows. Like, it looks really like, like a Jewish building, actually, because right. of, the, of the windows, because of the arcs and... Uh, right. So what was that? And uh, it, also the hotel, which had the name of London. Ah, London, London hotel. Jewish Hotel. Wow, great. And cool. opposite London, look at that building, red and white Even the red building. One. Okay. Uh, also the hotel, the name of it was Bristol. Also looks very Jewish. So the Bristol and London Jewish hotels. Right. I don't know why. I don't know why we're, we're still we're still sort of not living there. Um, this uh, this is the place where this is just an apartment block. Uh huh. And, and this one here, is. Uh, the tourist office occupies one of the rooms. Right. So that's rented uh, out. Mm -hmm. Larissa, this building looks a bit like a Jewish building. Could you could you tell me um, what is it, or what it used to be, and what is it now? Well, really, it has been preserved from before the Second World War, and here used to be a Jewish school. Um, wow. Now they have just ordinary people live here in uh -huh. the flats. They have flats here, and also um, handicapped people have uh, the, uh, their center here. They oh, come here, okay. they play tennis here, they have a sport hall here inside this building. Right, okay, but it used to be a Jewish school. Yes, okay. that's right. So let's go on. Now, I want to show you one more Jewish house. Uh, it has been preserved also from the pre-war period and uh, uh, re-established. Uh, it is on the right today. You can see it behind the trees. Um, today it is the art school, uh, but this building belonged to a Jewish person as well. The mm -hmm. merchant lived here and he had a lot of shops here. All his shops were in a different place. And that building was the last one on the right, the last building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the architecture is um, just coincide with all, all Jewish buildings uh, uh, resemble each other. Mm -hmm. They have some features that are the same and they prove, they uh, hint that mm -hmm. they belonged to Jewish persons. They have some peculiarities. Uh, you have already said the form of the windows. Yes, the arc, yeah. Could you tell me how, how badly Polotsk was destroyed during the Second World War? Uh, and what was the what was the sort of Jewish population at that time? And I know that there was ghetto and there was a execution site. Just give us a few uh, sort of ideas about those 
those that period of time. Mm -hmm. Really, Polesk was destroyed, uh, as it is said, by 70, maybe 70, 80 percent. Mm -hmm. But here in this very area, as these houses, as you see, have been restored, have been preserved. Before the war, uh, there were 36,000 people here and 60 percent were Jewish people. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, the fortune of Jewish population is tragic. Uh, when the war started, they made uh, the place where they put all the Jewish people and it was ghetto. All the Jews were placed in that part. So there and was a separate ghetto and, and the, the Jewish community was moved. When? Um, uh, because, because the Nazis came here a bit later than they came to Brest or Minsk. Um, so when was the ghetto executed? Was it just right before sort of liberation mm -hmm. of uh, Poland by Soviet army or was it before? The execution took place in, nine, in two stages. Mm -hmm. They took uh, the Jewish people outside the city. It is two or three kilometers from this place. Mm -hmm. And there they put them into the brick factory. Mm -hmm. There is a brick factory over there. And from the territory of that factory, they took them further on to the forest area and they were executed there in two stages. Um, about 8,000 Jews were killed uh, in 1943, mm -hmm. that execution took place. So and the, Polosk, like uh, the city of Polosk was liberated in 1943. Uh, 44. 44. From 1941 to 1944, the city was under occupation. We're, we're just walking along the, the, the riverside, right? Mm -hmm. And um, how intense the, the population was here settled? And uh, uh, was it like a, you know, a lot of Jews who settled on the bank mm -hmm. of the river? Uh, was there many Jewish buildings? And we can see some old buildings here. Could you just throw some light on, on the Jewish community? Um, living in this area? Yes, uh, a densely populated street and populated by mostly Jews here. Mm -hmm. uh, there were drug stores that belonged to Jews, um, such small, not hotels, we call them small houses where mm -hmm. people could stay because uh, the sheep used to come here right and uh, this ship took people to Vitebsk to uh -huh. Vichy Dvinsk but at that time that city was called Dvinsk and uh, here there was the place where the ship stopped and they could go to the houses where they could stay have a rest mm -hmm. like a restaurant so was Polsk was Polsk at that time like a, a trading center uh, a right, commerce, commercial right. Center Before between the revolution, uh, a lot of merchants uh, lived here. In this street, there were a lot of Jews. They used to be the Lutheran church. We had, at the end of the 19th century, we had a lot of Protestants here. Mm -hmm. And uh, Germans and Latvian people had their community here in this part of the city. And they lived among Jewish people. Uh, they had, uh, they didn't have the stone church, and they built it um, a bit later. Yeah, so this and is a they brick made church. it like yeah. a new Gothic church. Yes, it's a very nice building. Mm -hmm. Is it active now? No, unfortunately, uh, we don't know where this community is now. Uh, today, this building belongs to the Country Study Museum. All right, but okay. it differs from the rest. Of what about that? What about that brick All over there. Fence? Yeah. Uh, it's also an interesting place, very historical place. Uh, do you know the word Jesuits? Jesuits, these yeah. are Catholic monks. Yeah. And they were invited here to Polosk in the 16th century. Right. They were given that land uh -huh. and they built their school there. Heder on the right, uh, young boys got their first education here in Heder. You mean this the small, the, the small, small building. building? Yes. Okay. Uh, by the so way, just show the, the, the number 19, so this is, mm -hmm. used to be Heder. People live here now, somebody bought this house, I have no idea how they settled here, but uh, before the revolution, they used to be... So where do, you, where do you live? I live in Heder, come on! <laughs> 
Oh, one more interesting fact. What about uh, this one? Look at this building. It has been uh, remade, re re renovated, renovated. Uh -huh. but it used to be like that one, like that one wooden that uh, you have okay, just Okay, so the older us. one, so they, they just reconst reconstructed it, they renovated it uh, to look to The look houses nicer. here are very expensive, but entrepreneurs buy them and they renovate them and they organize different things in their house, like this one. This house also belonged to the end of the 19th, the beginning of the 20th century. One of the entrepreneurs bought it and made the shop here. One thing which doesn't belong to the 18th century is in front of us. All the rest have been preserved from the 18th century. In front of us, you see the apartment block, mm -hmm. but there used to be a very beautiful cathedral. I just make some magic <laughs> gestures and you will see this cathedral. Do you believe me? I'll show you this cathedral. Okay, let's see. <laughs> just a minute. Let's speed up a bit and look to that house of the Jewish merchant on the wall. You see that cathedral of Saint Stephen that used to be on that place. Ah, Unfortunately, okay. it was blown up by the order that came from this building. This building used to be in the 20th century, there used to be the eparchial Epoch, school, mm -hmm. the religious, religious school. Russian, for Russian Orthodox. That's right. Okay. Um, uh, later, after the war, here there used to be the Communist Party and they didn't want the, the cathedral to be, to be next to So it they blew then. up the cathedral. Yes, it was done in 1964 and we lost this heritage, uh, this highlight of the square. But on the left and on the right, these buildings were built by the order of Catherine the Great, Russian mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, empress. empress. Um, they appeared here at the end of the 18th century. Mm -hmm. Catherine the Great used to be here in Polotsk. Uh, she came here in 1878. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave the order because this part of Belarus went to Russia at that time. Right, okay. And but she what, was what, the hostess what, here. Was Polotsk a part of the Pale of Settlement of the, Jew, of the Jews? Uh, the Pale of Settlement was established 40 or 50 kilometers away from Poland. Ah, okay.